Hey guys, Battle Lizard one here and today I'm gonna bring you an underused battle against Aron87 and in this battle I'm testing out my new team. I start off with a Kaladol and he starts off with an Ambipom. I sense a fake out so I switch out to my physical wall who is wheezing and wheezing takes the fake out like a beast. Here uh, I forgot that Ambipom has the taunts, stupid me, uh, I've been doing too much overuse battles lately and uh, I went for the Will-O-Wisp and he predicts that very nicely, goes for a taunt and my Will-O-Wisp won't go. So um, he switches out and goes into Espeon but uh, I, ju I just switch out my uh, Wizzing as well and go into my uh, Claydol again uh, because I want to set up the Stealth Rocks. Uh, and I do, but he goes for a substitute. I was expecting a switch to be honest because most of the espions are scarfed, but uh, this one isn't. He goes for a baton pass, and I wanted to know in what he would baton pass. And the baton passes into a scyther. So his scyther has, uh, is going to get raped by the stealth rocks, luckily, um, but he still has the sub. And one single shadow ball would do about uh, 20 to 25 percent of damage. Too bad mine did like minimum damage and he is able to get off a Swords Dance. And here I'm really fearing because um, a, a Scyther with a Sword Dance can be really really dangerous. And um, yeah, I finally get to kill off the uh, Substitute with a Shadow Ball and he goes for an X Scissor and after a Sword Dance that is definitely going to um, kill me. And I haven't seen an item yet, so I probably think that this one is Life Orb. And after my Claydol dies, you can see that he gets um, some damage due to the Life Orb. So now I go into my Houndoom, and Houndoom is not like the standard Houndooms, this one is Scarfed. So I go for a Dark Pulse, and that is obviously going to take out um, the Scyther. He didn't expect that because he thought he would be faster and get off a sweep, so therefore he stayed in with Scyther. Now he goes to Ambipom again, and I sense another fake out because that is what Ambipom does. And I go back into my Weezing. Here I obviously don't want to get uh, the Will O Wisp taunt again, so he goes for a taunt as I expected, but I go for a Fire Blast straight away. It hits, but uh, unfortunately for him, I get a critical hit. And that critical hit uh, hits him down to like one hit point, I guess. So I don't think that critical hit mattered at all because a regular uh, fire blast of a uh, wheezing should do about 50% of damage. So um, nonetheless, I had uh, I needed to have two fire blasts or two moves at least to finish off the zombie palm. Now he switches out into Alakazam and my uh, Wizzing isn't a good matchup against Alakazam. So I go into my special wall, Fratella, and finally, after so many months, I decided to use Fratella again in this new team. And he was expecting me to expect him to go for the Psychic, so I would go for Houndoom and that he would go for a Signal Beam and finish off my Houndoom. That isn't working for him. I go into my Clefable, Clefable takes the Signal Beam as a beast, and I go for a Toxic. And uh, I was really surprised that he went into the Red Seal expecting me to go for a Toxic. It's like my Clefable is um, known all over the world by web or something. But uh, I was expecting a T-Wave here and my Hitmonlee has Limber. So he would, uh, wouldn't would be affected by it. So I go into Hitmonlee and I go for the Close Combat because I know that a Close Combat is a one-hit KO on a Registeel. That is basically why I run this Hitmonlee because... Um, it's like a beast in the UU metagame tier. So, um, due to Espeon's uh, poor uh, defenses, I am able to finish him off with a single close combat while he goes back into Alakazam. And I don't know a lot about this Alakazam, uh, only that it does not have the uh, leftovers. So I go into Michael Fable, I see that he uses Psychic, um, and I'm pretty much sure that he is either Scarfed or Spexed. So he, I'm expecting him to stay in here, going to my uh, Houndoom, who resists the Psychic, so Psychic won't do a thing against me. And now I expect him to switch out, so I just go for the Pursuit with Houndoom. And a single Pursuit with uh, Alakazam's poor defenses as well is going to take him out very, very easily. Um, I could have gone for the uh, Overheat as well, expecting him to go into Registeel. However, I didn't see his last Pokemon. And as you can see, it's a Water-type resisting the Fire-type move. So. It was good for me that I went for the Pursuit. Now he goes for his Azumarill, goes for a Waterfall, and I'm expecting this Azumarill to be banded, otherwise he would have set up the Substitute earlier. So he goes for a Waterfall, he returns the crit, um, I gave him a crit on his Ambipom, so I guess that is fair. 
and I'm going to Hitmonlee now. Hitmonlee is definitely going to outspeed Azumarill if it isn't scarfed, and even if it's scarfed, I would outspeed. So I go for a close combat, and close combat is uh, definitely going to take out the Azumarill. And I'm going to be faster than Registeel, and a single close combat is definitely going to still kill Registeel. So uh, this was my new UU team. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed this battle as well. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. And yeah, I guess I'll see you next time then. Uh, be sure to stay tuned for uh, today's question of the day. And yeah, that was uh, me. So Registeel goes down, and that's game. So... Peace out guys and see you next time. So here we are again with another question of the day. And this question of the day is about your favorite ice type Pokemon. Um, my favorite ice type Pokemon is either Cloyster of Bama Snow because um, the last one is able to set up uh, is able to set up hail, which is very nice for hailstorm teams. And Cloyster is just my all-time favorite because I'm old school and I play Kanto and Kanto Rock. So, yeah, basically, what's your favorite ice type move? Leave your answer as a reply to this video. And see you next time, guys. See ya.